What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Thank you so much for joining me today. Man, if it wasn't for listeners like you, you know, I wouldn't even have a show. And that's really the bottom line. So I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for each and every time you join me here on the podcast. And I got to ask you, if you find some value in this episode, do me a favor, subscribe to the show and even share it with your friends. So with that out of the way, let's jump right in there and start having this conversation today. I've got a guest that's joining me. He is a certified independent health coach, and I may have gotten that backwards. He's an independent certified health coach. And the bottom line there is, is that we have to take control over how we maintain our health. And we're going to dig into that a little bit deeper, kind of get an idea of how maximizing our diet, maximizing our gym habits, or our overall just health habits can have a massive, massive impact on the way that we conduct our lives, we run our business. I mean, it literally affects and impacts everything that we do. So Josh Hicks, welcome to the show. Hey, Larry, thanks for having me on. It's good to see you today. How's everybody doing? I think we're doing great, man. We're excited to have you here and I'm glad that we could finally get together. Obviously we tried to get together before, I kinda had to postpone things. So uh, a little travel out to Florida that we were talking about in the green room, man. It was awesome out there. You mentioned Florida is one of your favorite spots too. Yeah, I love Florida, man. I mean, I, I can imagine why you postponed for that. It's a great place to uh, travel to. And hey, man, we adapt and overcome, right? Things come up, but we got to be the dominant force whenever we're faced with adversity. So we just pivot it, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, you're the boss. So you got to make the rules as you go because sometimes the rules, they change on the fly and we have to be able to adapt. But one of the things that can really impact our ability to adapt is our health. Yeah. So talk to me more about being an independent certified health coach. What does that mean? Well, I mean, for me, it, it, there's a very deep passion with it. I mean, it, it has changed my life uh, dramatically. In 20, 2019, I was about 60 pounds overweight, um, an army veteran, and I had struggled with life in, in all areas, really, financially, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I was just struggling. Couldn't figure out where God was leading me, what he had for my life, but where I was currently at, I knew there had to be more. But I didn't know what that was. And I think a lot of times, if we're honest with ourselves, we desire and seek more, but we don't always know what more looks like. Um, and I got to tell you, a healthy mind brings a healthy body. You know, healthy body, healthy mind. They work hand in hand. And uh, being a, a health coach has been so rewarding because I'm really genuinely invested in seeing other people win. Uh, I have the opportunity to work with clients across the nation and see them really become the dominant force in their own life. Um, from a physical transformation to a mental transformation, creating more personal development. And sometimes, hey, if they're really intentional, they can even create financial possibility there too. Everybody works individually and uniquely hard at their own goals and desires. But I say that um, with that disclaimer, just because you, only you can be the dominant force. And that's by making a choice, not by chance. So it's been a lot of fun. I mean, 60 pounds overweight, Larry, I was, uh, you know, I was in the gym and I was under that common misconception that I'm overweight, I'll just work out harder. And then I'll reward myself with food afterwards. And a lot of times this is what we do. Um, or we might not even fuel our body correctly in the first place, thinking that will help us speed up um, weight loss or get to some ultimate physique that we want and ultra health. Um, but really being educated in these areas is super important because changing one thing can change everything. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to really be on this show with you today and hopefully dive a little bit deeper into that so that the listeners can hear and something can resonate and really compel them to move forward too. Yeah, most definitely. And and I can relate to this also. So I think the timing of you and I getting together is pretty amazing. You know, on January 4th of this year, I weighed 326 pounds. As I sit here today, uh, and I haven't weighed in this morning, I'll be completely <laughs> honest, but at my last weigh in, which was two days ago, uh, tipped the scales at 248. So I'm I'm down 78 pounds this year. And that's that's a, that's a whole lot of Larry that's out the window there. But, you know, I'll tell you, the way that I did most of it was diet, yeah. was diet. People go, how did you lose so much weight in 10 months? And it was primarily diet. Now, I also got off some some meds that I was on. And, you know, of course, I'm blaming those for the for the weight increase. And but at the same time, I mean, if we look at the uh, what I was eating and the amount that I was eating, that was definitely, you know, the biggest contributor. And I've achieved what I've achieved so far this year, 
primarily on a reduction of caloric intake and also what I'm eating. Granted, there's been a little bit, and I, I want to stress a little bit of exercise. There hasn't been a ton. I did buy a Rogue Echo bike, and I've been getting after the bike a little bit, but really only 10 to 15 minutes about three times a week. That's yeah. really all the working out that I'm doing. Now, granted, now that I'm a little bit smaller, I plan on upping that and even getting into a little more weight training and actually maybe, 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 I don't want to commit to this just yet. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get back in the gym. So we'll see how that goes down. But it's already made a tremendous impact on my life. I mean, I'm more mobile. I'm happier. Uh, I sleep better. I have less overall pain carrying around 326 pounds. That's a lot of work for a body. 100%. 100%. I mean, you know, listen, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you do good. If you do good, you want good, right? I mean, it just all works hand in hand with each other. And I got to tell you that I have to say I was, when I was 60 pounds overweight, I felt like I had knew all and could be all and I could do it on my own until I realized I couldn't do anything until I made changes to all of who I was. And it sounds like you've had some massive changes there too. So congratulations. I mean, yeah, 70 pounds down, that's a massive accomplishment. Um, and I, I'm sure some of our listeners here, they just want to lose 10 pounds and they'd be happy. 100%. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's all about making changes to your overall habits, right? That's what really is what sets in for sustainability and long-term optimal health and weight. So tell me what got you on this path, man. I, I, you woke up one morning, you realized you were a little overweight and you said, hey, man, I got to make this change. Or were you already a health coach, even in that the, the state of being a little overweight? How did that all come together? No, it's a great question. I mean, you know, I returned home from a deployment and I was really struggling with life in a lot of ways. I mean, mentally, I was, my mental health was in a really bad position and I'd be completely transparent with you today. Tell you, I still have moments, but it's about sure. how you overcome those moments and you face them head on, you know. And so for about five years, I ran a construction business, um, my wife and I, and we grew so fast, so quick, um, but we weren't liquid enough to really support that growth. Um, and we quickly ran and learned that we could not um, make payroll. We were struggling and uh, we were living on a credit card and a prayer. And I mean, when I say God does a lot with a little, it was just that. I can't always say every Friday that checks would clear. There would be some bounce checks, but then by Monday or Tuesday, we could get it straightened out in the following week. Um, and it was just by just grit, determination and continuing to move forward. Even when you didn't know exactly what those results were gonna be, you just had to continue with daily action. And I found myself praying the same prayers every day, asking God for provision. And one day, all that prayer and faith and consistency added up and it was heard in a big kind of way. I was standing in the middle of a gym right here in Maryland and a gentleman was traveling from Malaysia and he came here on a family matter because he had moved from Maryland you know, many years back on business, but he was coming back to Maryland. And he walked up to me and struck up a random conversation and said, you know, you remind me a lot of myself. Could I share a program with you? Well, I was in a broken state at that point. I wasn't in a position to talk to anybody. And I certainly didn't feel like being sold. So I gave him the short answer and an email and left the gym. I didn't think I'd hear anything else from this gentleman, but he emailed me. I jumped on a phone call with him. Um, he connected me with a guy that lived 20 minutes down the street from me. In fact, this guy that he connected me with, I actually passed in and out of the gym on several different accounts, but never had a conversation. So you talk about God bringing a person from across the globe that literally brings the change and transformation you need. Well, this was it. And uh, I added to adhere to it. You know, when I said yes to buying a box of food, my wife looked at me like I was crazy, asked me how I was going to pay for a box of food. We can't even make payroll. And this wasn't a good idea. And I remember like it was yesterday looking at her and telling her that I just have to do this. And I feel like I need to do this. You know, so now when you guys hear this, I really want to challenge you to unplug and really hear where I'm coming from with this, because I wasn't the business owner that was driving the nice vehicle, but broke on the inside. I was broke on the outside as much on the inside. We have four kids. We had a Honda Odyssey minivan and we were driving around one day. I took this car van to the car wash, a brilliant idea against my wife's better judgment of saying, don't take it. It's a piece of junk. And I was going through the car wash to get a special and get them to vacuum it out and clean it up really nice. And I forgot to tell them not to open that door. They opened the driver's side door and it fell right off the track in front of a string of traffic behind me. The car wash attendants had to hold the door up while I pulled the van off to the side so the other cars could go around me. That was at the point where my life was at the lowest of lows. And that's where everything really changed for me because I was at a place at rock bottom and I knew I needed to make a change. And the 
the owner of that car wash walked up to me and said, I'm really sorry that this happened. And he gave me a gift certificate of $10. It was like a little card, $10 gift certificate. And I was thinking to myself at this point, right? You guys can relate. When you're at a place where you're broken, you feel like you need something amazing and magnificent to really offset the pain. Well, that was where I was. And I was thinking to myself, $10, what's that going to do? I need like $1,000 or something. Yeah. You know, that was the victim mindset that I was in. Now, mind you, I had just started this program. I'm still about 50 plus pounds overweight at the time. And um, I put the gift card in the back of my wallet. I went home that day. I talked to my wife and told her what happened and said, you were right. I shouldn't have taken the car to the car wash. But this is where everything changes for us. I started coaching this program. I continued to get healthy and make radical changes in my life. And I even took it a step further and decided that I was going to build the following on Facebook and do a bodybuilding competition. And I'll let you tee in right here, Larry, ask some other questions, but this is where it gets really good. <laughs> it's interesting because there's so many things, so many different components that came together to build up to this moment. Uh, I, I don't know that I've ever heard of anyone pulling up and having the car fall out or the door fall off their car. I mean, <laughs> that's, yeah. uh, but I, I can appreciate the embarrassment that may have come into play there. Uh, the $10 gift card also very, very impactful because I mean, again, as you stated, you know, when you're in those situations, the last thing you want is something small when your, your problems seem so huge and yeah. it's, it's hard to look at that with any sort of gratitude in the moment. So I'm, 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 I'm trying to piece all of the, uh, piece the puzzle together, if you will, because there's so much and. First and foremost, I want to thank you for your service. We really appreciate that. You've got the military background. You've got the company. You're struggling with a very large family. Congratulations on four kids as well. Uh, it, but it definitely can de be a struggle in that arena. So I'm trying to piece all this together, but it seems like you're kind of just living in chaos at the time. And oh, I, I think everyone listening can relate to that to some degree. You know, we all like to put on that persona on the outside, as you kind of brought up, that everything is kind of cool for those that can see us you know, from an outward perspective. But on the inside, it's just turmoil and chaos. But at some point, our lives definitely reach that pinnacle where we can't just maintain the chaos internally it bleeds over it breaks into the real world and everything that has to do with everything that we're involved with so at that moment i don't know that i would have been thinking about doing a bodybuilding competition well i know i never would have thought that because well even <laughs> even coming up in my 20s i was six three six four at about a buck 55 so yeah. bodybuilding was never my jam but uh I don't know how that comes into play here. So help me tie all this together, brother, because I'm I'm struggling here. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I mean, it's a great pivot point, right? You know, as a man, I felt like I wasn't providing for my family at all, like I should be as a man. And I had this uh, picture in my mind of what a man was supposed to look like for their family. And, you know, I grew up in a very abusive home as a kid. So I promised myself domestic violence would never be something I want my children to be exposed to. Um, and when I say I grew up in an abusive home, I can take you back to when I remember rolling up a Kodak camera, the wind up film kind, taking a picture of my mom's face where she had just got kicked. Um, so there's things you just can't unsee. So there's a lot of insecurities buried deep down in Josh, you know, coming back off of this military tour to all these things starting to play back in my mind of what kind of man am I really? Am I a product of what I was raised in or am I better than this? So, you know, I had this financial burden. I felt like my family was in sheer chaos. I'm remarried, trying to really juggle everything and make a better situation out of a mess that's prior to where I am currently. And I, you know, here I am in a car wash with the, dan the, the door falling off the van. And, you know, I got no money. I am doing this program. I got to show my wife that this is going to be the opportunity of a lifetime for us with no understanding of what really it's going to look like six months from now. So uh, let me jump we, in there. You, you, this this program that you're talking about is the bodybuilding program? No. This no. Is something completely secular. I mean, I don't ever even I don't even coach bodybuilding, right? I coach people having whole health transformations. But this bodybuilding piece came in for me because I wanted to win. I was losing in every area of my life and I had somebody uh, compliment me on my weight loss and how symmetrical I looked and asked me if I ever competed. 
Gotcha. And I said, no, I never did. But then I started getting this frame of mind around how cool would it be to lose this weight, go on stage and win and be start adding some wins to my life. So, you know, I came home to my wife this day you know, after this van uh, incident. And I said to her, I said, this is going to be the changing point for us. And I put the card in my wallet and kept it there. It's still there to this day as a reminder. And she said, I said, I'm going to get you a new vehicle and we're going to start seeing some real freedom. And I remember her looking at me and it wasn't in a spiteful way. It was just in a painful way because she was dealing with the negative overdrafts that we were getting on a weekly basis. And she said, maybe we'll have a car payment. And that hurt that I couldn't even give my wife a vehicle to drive around that was decent for our family. Sure. So I, this is where the dog mentality of me really came in. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go and do a bodybuilding competition. And I actually was bold enough to air this out. And there was some NPC judges and stuff that, you know, I had look at me and I had some people comment back or send me some messages telling me that, you know, you're going to look emaciated. You can't compete the same year. You lose all this weight and everything. So to give you guys a, you know, a timeline in March of 2019, I started this program a week later in April, I've, I'm, I'm coaching this program. In June, I take this car to the car wash and the door falls off the hinges. In June, I also decide to, you know, start doing a bodybuilding competition, prepping for that, all while losing this weight. So I use the program as my catalyst. I dropped 60 pounds in about 18 weeks um, without really using any gym time at all, just really letting the nutrition of this program do the work. Um, results not typical, right? Everybody has to work their own effort <laughs> to follow the program to their accordance. But um, yeah, so I, I did this program. I dropped the weight. And then in October of 2019, uh, I went on stage for an all-natural uh, bodybuilding competition, and I took first place. So against Congrats. all odds. Yeah, it was huge. It was a huge accomplishment, Larry. And I got to tell you, this is where things changed for me, because now I was starting to tally up wins. A year and a half later, um, I was able to you know, shut my construction business down. And today, all I do is really focus on helping other people win. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see how just that one little win, if if throughout all of our struggles, if we can just get that one win, just yeah. one in anything, please just give me some sort of accomplishment, some sort of inspiration. Give me that one win. And it's almost like a spark because yeah. it just it can ignite with that one win. So the bodybuilding competition was your spark. You went back, you shut down the construction company and you launched into the coaching business. Yes, 100%. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly right. I mean, we've got to find the wins and there's little wins along the way, every step of the way, we've got to find those wins. And the problem with you know society today is, is that we live in such a victim mindset world where the world is happening uh, to me and not for me. Um, sure. And that really is a pivotal change. I mean, when you can have that paradigm shift in the mind, anything is possible at that point. I mean, I'm telling you, when I was getting, I was in the gym when I was getting messages about don't do this or don't do that. And then email alerts about negative bank overdrafts and, you know, checks bouncing. These are all points where I could have just quit. I could have just said, I can't do it, you know? but I decided to make a change. And that's what we have to really take from this call. So when, when you made that change, how did you move forward? How did you go from construction company to coaching? Talk to me about the certification process and how, how did you navigate that path? Man, it's so awesome. It's uh, that's such a great topic because that was the kind of reserve I had in my mind. When I was asked if I could pay this gift forward and help some other clients, um, you know, achieve their weight goals, would I be interested in doing that? And you have to understand when I was asked this question, I wasn't giving them any financial um, input on where I currently was, but I knew I needed some changes um, in my financial health too. And I said, yeah, I'd love to help some people get healthy and earn an income doing it and find a way if that's all possible to make, help them win, you know, and, but I don't know anything about this. How can I go about it? And the response was very simple. This is a grow as you go. The way we walked with you on your own health journey, we walk with you as a mentor on coaching and becoming a successful coach as well. And so that's the piece of it. You The, the certification that you get, I mean, you, you, you are provided the information. You can become certified at any point, right from an online um, test 
uh, that, you know, takes a little bit of studying and some effort, but it's definitely obtainable. And it's knowledge that once you, you apply, it will help you long-term. And then when it comes from the coaching point, how getting involved in making that transition, well, it's like anything. So it's necessary to do uncomfortable and inconvenient things to make changes that are going to benefit you both short and long-term and those that are around you. And so that's how I made that, that transition being in a place of really saying, I want to change and doing something about it because many people now, Larry, I think you'll agree with this is that they'll say they want to change, but they're not willing to do what's necessary to make those changes. Well, I, I think doing what's necessary can be painful at times. So yes. I'm, I'm I obviously you've gone through a lot of pain yourself. How does how do you feel about that? Because I, I kind of have the perspective that in order for us to progress, in order for us to grow, there's got to be a pain catalyst in there somewhere as well. There's no growth without some sort of pain, whether it be physical or emotional or spiritual or I mean uh, all of the above. So yeah. how does how do you feel about that? What's your take on growth through pain? Well, you grow through what you go through, right? I mean, you know, the biggest the biggest thing that um, we face today with people is is fear and self doubt, um, and it really cripples us because we just what you just said the pain point we have a low tolerance for a high pain point, and it takes a high level of pain to move us from a place of comfort and complacency. Um, you absolutely have to be willing to go through the pain. It's part of the process. And there is purpose in your pain. Name, name one thing that you've ever went through in your life that didn't require some level of discomfort that once you moved through it and came to that point of success, whatever it is, big or small, that you didn't feel grateful for and weren't glad that you didn't go through that in the first place in order to get there. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can. I, I don't think there's anything, you know, I, whether it's a career, whether it, it may even just in school, if we think back, even to grade school, if we can think back that far, for some, it may be further than others. But studying for that spelling bee test, even that sucked, you know, <laughs> going through high school, studying to get those grades up so you can get into college if that was your gig. That sucked. College, same way. It sucked training for a position in wherever your career took you that sucked but as you overcome these as you go through that suck as you go through that pain you accomplish something each and every step of the way you know eight years ago i was an alcoholic i went through rehab that sucked guess what not an alcoholic anymore better than ever i feel yeah. better than i felt in years and i'm obviously i'm in my 40s i'm 49 years old feel better than some of the times that i felt in my 20s and yes i can remember back that far but <laughs> the, the pain the pain was all part of the catalyst so that's what drove me forward each and every step of the way and yeah. that's what has us sitting here today is going through that fire is going through that pain and using it to shape us and it's just like I'm, I'm a huge fan of the show Forged in Fire. You yes. know, you start off with nothing. You start off with a cold piece of steel and it has to go through the fire in order for it to be forged into the weapon that it becomes. And it's the same thing in our lives. We have to go through that fire. We have to go through that pain and forge ourselves. Now, the difference is that some of us fall prey to the pain and we wallow in the pain and we accept the pain. And as you mentioned before, society has really shaped us into becoming more of victims and we maintain that victimhood mentality. How do yes. we overcome that, man? How, as the coach that you are, how can you help us overcome that victimhood mentality? Because again, everywhere we look, whether it's the cancel culture, whether it's politics, whether uh, those two are one and the same actually, but anywhere we look, victimhood is almost being commercialized. It's almost, we're almost motivated to be a victim. If you turn on the TV, if you look at the news, if you go on the internet, victimhood, man, that's, that's for sale everywhere and everybody's buying. But it doesn't get us man. anywhere. It doesn't get us anywhere. So how do we look beyond that? No, that's 100. I mean, you know, first of all, I want to say it's uh, it, it all starts in the mind, right? You know, you, you got to take your thoughts captive. If you don't, your, your thoughts will take you captive. And that's by a clear measure of stories versus facts, right? This is from moving from an unconscious position to a conscious position. 
And I'll say that, you know, look at the last four people that you, you had a daily conversation with. You'll be the fifth of them four. You know, who you surround yourself with, you become more of. So you need to really uh, improve or focus on the surroundings because this is what's going to move you. It's going to challenge you to grow. It's going to force you to do things differently, right? It's like you, you look at millionaires or you look at, you know, all, all time successful people. They're not hanging out doing the things that non-successful people are doing, right? They're doing the daily action steps that are moving them forward. Now, I'll say that to say this, with how do you move from that victim mindset? Well, you move from a place of me to we, right? You start doing things that are giving you small wins because you're celebrating others and their wins. And if they're winning, you're winning. So that's really the simplest way to put it. I mean, what are you doing today differently than you did yesterday? Because a lot of people say, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. And you're right. If you say you can't, you can't. But if you say you can, you can. And it's all from a shift in the mind. Get up an hour earlier. Wake up an hour earlier than you usually do. Start by doing that. That's one win right there. I guarantee you that if you start waking up an hour earlier versus waking up at the last minute, hitting the snooze button, rushing out the door, your day will be more organized and collected. It all comes down, it sounds like, to just some self-discipline. Yeah. I mean, with your military background and your bodybuilding background, you have to have a ton of discipline built in just from, from those two alone. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether you, the bodybuilding competition was was like a natural bodybuilding competition because we tend yes. to it's all done basically via diet and and obviously some in the gym as well. But looking at that perspective, it's all discipline, no matter what it is, whether it's training in the gym or whether it's watching your diet, it's discipline, whether it's getting up an hour earlier, it's discipline whether it's thinking productive thoughts and not doing those things, as you had mentioned, that the successful, the millionaires, the billionaires are doing each and every day. That's the difference. And it's all discipline. Yeah, 100%. And you know, also, Larry, again, it goes back to finding that structure and support system. You know, 85% of self-contained diets are unsuccessful with the weight coming back on in two years or less. The number one reason is lack of behavioral support. There was no habitual change. Right. They got the right. weight off and went back to their old patterns and habits. Why? Because they didn't have accountability. They didn't have someone there to really help remind them and be there to support them and cheer for them and win for them. That's why being a health coach is so rewarding because we all need coaches in our life. And if you're in a position right now where you hear this call and think, I, I don't need no coach. Well, I couldn't tell you that's further from the truth because I was in that mindset and frame of mind too one point in time. Um, you know, so yeah, man, it's, it's habits. It's, 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 you know, the routines that we create are going to be a product of good habits or bad habits. We all have routines. So you have to look at your routines. And it's breaking those habits, which, which can be extremely difficult, you know, going back to the alcoholism. And it's, it's funny because my wife and I were just talking about this last night because you see so many people slip back into alcoholism or drug abuse. Matter of fact, we were watching this show on Hulu called Dope Sick. And if you haven't seen Dope Sick, I highly recommend it. Great show. Michael Keaton's in it with a, a host of other great actors and actresses. And it's just a phenomenal show about the Oxycontin, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The addiction. That's not the word that I was looking for. But when Oxycontin was first introduced into the market and how it took over and it had addicts just popping up out of the woodworks and it literally had a massive destructive impact on our entire country. So it's a great show to watch, but you see people slipping back into those addictive behaviors. And it's just not something that resonates with me as far as slipping back. You know, I don't do 12 steps. I don't go to meetings. I don't do anything. When I went to rehab, I needed that break in the pattern because mm -hmm. I had a pattern of doing certain things each and every day, night, you name it. It got to where it was 24 seven. But once I had that break in that pattern and I had that interrupt, I was able to reset. And then when I come out, it's just over. And it's, it's just done because you have that accountability. You have that mentality that, look, I'm breaking that habit. And that's all I needed was to break that habit. 
Once it was done, it was done. And I think we can apply that to so many different aspects of our lives, whether it's an addiction, whether it's a relationship that's a negative relationship. You talked about domestic violence, whether you're caught up in that, whether it's it's having a horrible career or a lack thereof. Breaking those habits is such a key component to moving forward. How do you coach people to break their habits? Well, we use a four component system. I mean, the program we coach is a, a proven predictable plan. Um, and we, we really work on, you know, one element at a time with them, you know, starting with their why. Once we get your why, and I'm not asking you your why, I'm asking you to go, you know, seven layers deep with your why. Why do you want your why? And why do you want that, you know, really causing them to have some self-evaluation. Then how are we going to do it? Then what happens from there? all the way through to, you know, creating all those six macro habits, really making sure we're honing in on each macro habit of health to really move you forward. Um, You know, I want to give you an example of this and how this looks, right? I'm a health coach, right? I'm not perfect by any means. Um, You know, I did a natural bodybuilding competition. I won't do any other competing in the bodybuilding realm uh, for one reason. One, uh, One, from what I qualified for, the next level up, a lot of those individuals, not saying all, but a lot use PEDs. I'm not for that. I don't support that. I don't think God created me to put PEDs in my body. I think he created me to have a holistic way of health and, you know, take care of your body. That's number one. But number two, from that place of, of being before was just to show the world that being ordinary is a choice as much as being extraordinary. And so um, that was where I was really going with that. It was the whole purpose of it in the first place to show the world that you can do phenomenal things if you want to. But talking about these, how you dive into breaking these habits down and really helping someone have a total transformation, mind and body, you know, look, two and a half years later, guys, I've been doing this program and coaching. I get up at 3 a.m. in the morning. You know why? Because I used to sleep in until eight or nine because I got in the habit of not having anybody telling me I need to get up and go to a job site. So I started getting myself up at 3 a.m. to go to the gym in the morning. Some people say, that's crazy. I need my sleep. I'm going to stay. I'm not getting up that early. Well, I needed to make a change. Otherwise, I was going to start getting lazy again because it was already happening. And I was going to start falling back into that old routine of patterns. And again, this is how you really help someone to challenge their way of thinking and break them cycles. It's funny that you talk about getting up at three and that definitely freaks a lot of people out. You know, I, I'm familiar with Hal Elrod and he talks about the miracle morning and he gets up at four thirty. So yeah. now we see other people getting up at three, other people getting up at two. Uh, there's a gentleman that I listen to, Wes Watson. He's phenomenal. He's got a great YouTube channel. He speaks to me the way that I kind of like being spoken to. It might be a little more profane than some people appreciate, but you know, yeah. I need somebody to look at me and call me bad names and tell me to get my shit together. I mean, that's just the yeah. bottom line. And yep. that's exactly how he approaches it. And he gets up, I think he gets up at two. And it's just, I'm like, are, are we just reversing when we're functioning? Because it's going back earlier and earlier and earlier. But, yeah. you know, I, I don't get caught up in what time we're getting up. Get caught up in the pattern interrupt. Get caught up in the discipline that it takes to make that decision and move forward in your path and on your journey. Whatever it is, whether it's 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4.30, if it's 6 a.m., whatever it may be, don't get caught up in the numbers. Get caught up in making the changes. Yes, 100%. Well, it's a great, you know, that brings us into a great topic, right? We're going into Thanksgiving, December, then it's the new year. And 92% of people quit. They don't succeed um, to the level of success they can have. 8% are all-time successful. So I use the new year as an example. Everybody makes the new year resolution. Why is the new year the point in which you say you're going to change? Because I'm telling you right now, and don't don't quote me if you had a new year's breakthrough and you change, that's great. But typically speaking, if you're going to wait till a certain day to change, you're not going to change. Not anything that's lasting because you're waiting for a day to measure the success that you'll have. Success starts now, today, wherever you are here in this. This is when success starts. This is when you say enough is enough and you make the change. Not, well, the weekend, then I'll get back. No, it starts now. Yeah, 100%. And I just want to put a little caveat in there. My January 4th date was not 
<laughs> Even though the date's there, it was not a New Year's resolution. It just right. it coincided with the day that I left corporate America and went into content creation full time. So everything yeah. for me started January 4th, but it wasn't a resolution. I don't do resolutions yeah. specifically for that reason. Yeah. It, it, it goes back to, and you know, of course, I'm going to reference sobriety because, I mean, that's the one of the biggest things that's happened to me in my life was becoming an alcoholic. Whoever never would have seen that coming. But I can remember back when we were struggling because my wife, she stopped drinking as well, but she did it without rehab because she's Wonder Woman. She's tremendous and she's super strong and I commend her for her efforts. Uh, but we would always, when we were trying to quit on our own before we had that pattern interrupt of me going to rehab, we go, you know what? We'll just have, we'll, we'll, we'll start Monday. This is our yeah. last week. This our, let's just kill the bottles that we have because, yeah, we were going through handles per week. Handle was 750 milliliter bottles of gin. And we were going through at 1.4 handles a week, not including the cold beer that we were throwing down to. So we'd be right there caught up in that chaos. And we go, you know what? Let's just finish these bottles. We'll start Monday. Monday will be it. We'll, we'll yeah. be clean. Yeah. It never happens. It never yeah. happens. Because you have to start right now. You have to stop what you're doing, get that pattern up, pattern interrupt in place and start making those changes. There's no reason to wait. No, 100%. And I want to really edify what you just said, because you, you said January 4th. Um, that's, a, that's a great point, right? But I can guarantee you that you actually started making the change mentally and making some shifts in the prior year before January 4th came, you were in preparation. So that Monday mentality is out the door, right? That new year mentality is out the door, but that's the reason. That's the reason why a lot of us are really falling short in our successful opportunity and potential because we have a Monday mentality. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it can be so devastating to everything that we're doing. The mentality needs to be now embrace yeah. the pain, make the change and do it right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I really would like to just say this to that, to add some value, right? Is that guys, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what program or what you decide you want to be in life. It starts with you. You ultimately have to be in control of you. And until you are, everything else will consume and control you. Right on. Well, Josh, this has been uh, an amazing episode of the podcast, and I appreciate you joining me. Uh, you've, you've been through a lot. You've come out on the other side. You're an inspiration with your story and your struggles. Where can people find out more about you and dig a little bit deeper into what you bring to the table? Yeah, you can uh, send me an email at Hicks, H-I-C-K-S, healthcoaching at gmail.com. And also uh, we'll put our my Facebook link in the in the comments here. So you have that. Um, and I'm obviously on connection with Larry. So you can find me on Facebook. I'm public, um, you know, and I just want to really leave you guys with this. Send me a private message. I respond. I always have my phone in my hand because I want to help people have breakthrough. If God can take a person from across the globe and change my financial collapse, my mental health and physical health, why do you think he can't help you change your life too? Yeah, there's definitely no reason to think that whatsoever. So everybody reach out to Josh. Uh, I, I'm confident he can help you get where you need to go. So Josh, thank you so much for joining me, man. I really, really appreciate it. It's very thought provoking. Some of the things that we talked about today. So hopefully we had an impact with the audience. That is always the goal here. So folks, if you got something out of this, once again, please subscribe to the show. And forward it to your friends, forward it to somebody that you think needs to hear this message. I know there's people in each and every one of our lives that need that new perspective that could use the guidance of somebody like Josh. And I guarantee you they'll appreciate it. So thank you once again. And we'll talk to you next week. All right. See you guys.